Today I'm going to be talking about a project I recently worked on that involves these. These are two little RF modules. This is a receiver and this is a transmitter. And the idea is that you give both of these 5 volts through a VCC pin and a ground pin. And here the pin labels are on the other side. Uh, you give it VCC, which is 5 volts, and then ground. And you apply data here. And then the data is wirelessly transmitted here and it comes out here. And it's simple enough, whereas if this is high, this will be high, and if this is low, this will be low. Uh, it gets a little bit confusing for a few reasons. Number one is that this is extremely noisy, so you get a lot of random high and low coming out here. And uh, any intelligent protocol that's going to be sending data from here to here is going to have to be able to overcome that. Another thing is that it can't stay high or low for very long. If it stays one or the other state uh, for more than a few milliseconds, it'll start to get noisy and it really needs to be alternating continuously and rapidly. It also has best results if it has a 50% duty cycle. So if you're varying the width of pulses, you should probably have the same amount of high time as low time. But I'm not going to go into the details there. Just uh, keep in mind that I made a very simple RF protocol that's easy to be inserted into any microcontroller, and it just sends numbers by toggling pins. But I'll talk about that in a little bit. Uh, these modules are extremely inexpensive. Here's an example of an eBay page which shows them. And it's $1.56 for the receiver and the transmitter. And that's shipped. That's with free shipping. So that's clearly inexpensive. So we've got about $1.50 here, so that's good. Uh, the other thing I do is to get it to my computer. So the ultimate goal is to have a microchip attached here. I want to have a microchip sending data to my computer wirelessly. And the easiest way to get information from this to my computer, at least for me, was to send it through the sound card. And for that, I'm using another eBay special, $1.65 with free shipping for a USB sound card. For, so for about three bucks, we have a whole wireless solution. Um, it's also worth noting that the performance of these little modules can be improved by adding an antenna, which is just a vertical wire. Um, a quarter wavelength of 433 megahertz is about 17 centimeters, so they recommend having wires of length about 17 centimeters. So I did that here. Here's the transmitter, and it's attached to a microcontroller. The microcontroller is an AT Mega 48, which is very similar to the types that they use for the Arduino, but this is not Arduino. I'm just writing the code in C. We have a LM7805 voltage regulator, and I'll pop open the code really quick just to show you what it does. Uh, so the data I'm going to be sending wirelessly today is just numbers that increment from 0 to 200. Uh, this is the code. We'll look at it here. This is the code that does that. Um, this is the main program. And we have a, in the protocol, it needs a little time to sync and then it sends every number between 0 and 200 and then we lose the signal intentionally and all of the code to do that is pretty small we have a send function we have a send byte function um, a function of force losing, a function to sync and this is the sample data it's very simple, so that's the entire program on the microchip so it doesn't need any special serial capability so you can use a microcontroller that doesn't have serial built in uh, you can also just put this in any microcontroller, whether it has special protocols or not. So this is a very simple, robust way to send data out. So let's show it working. Uh, I'll close this. And, um, okay, so the next thing is I took the case off of the sound card. This is the sound card. And I have the RF receiver attached to it. If you look on the other side, you can see that's the RF receiver. I have the antenna where it needs to go. And the data pin is connected to the microphone jack of the sound card. That way, as data is coming out, I can just view it in a sound editor. So I will plug this in my computer down here. Okay, so that's in, plugged in now. And for demonstration purposes, I will open a sound editor. This is going to be Gold Wave. It's really simple Windows software. Uh, I'm going to start a new recording, and right now I'm just going to be recording noise. This is just what happens if there's no signal, because right now I'm not transmitting anything. 
if I were to play it, that's what it sounds like. If you zoom in, it's just sort of random, high and low. That's what happens. The receiver is designed to continuously increase gain until it gets the signal, and whether that's just noise or actual intelligence signal is something that the receiver doesn't know. We have to figure that out in the software. Uh, let's close that, and then I'll activate the transmitter. <laughs> it's harder than it looks to do with one hand. Okay, so now it should be transmitting. Um, we can record. And it will sound a little different. It'll be a little higher pitched if we play it. So that's what it sounds like. And if we zoom in, we can see that there are pulses of different lengths. So it's exactly 50% duty cycle. So like here, if we have a big pulse high, we're going to have a big pulse low, and vice versa. Um, very small pulses, like this one and these two, these represent ones. A larger pulse like this one represents, I'm sorry, that other way around. Small pulses like this represent zeros. Large pulses like this represent ones. And a really large pulse like this represents the end of a number. So this is sending multiple numbers over and over. Uh, not only is it sending a single number, but actually like this represents two numbers being sent. It sends one number, and then it sends the inverse of that number as a proof checking mechanism. So it gets the if it gets a number clearly and the mirror image of the same number, the software will know that this is a real data packet. Um, and this is clearly very fast, this is only a fraction of a second, and I'm able to send about 700 8-bit numbers a second with error checking. So let's show that. Um, I wrote the receiving software in Python, and it uses the Pi Audio library to interface the sound card, and I called it the SH RFP monitor, RFP being the Scott Harden RF protocol, kind of the temporary name. Uh, and before I mention anything, I'll say that I designed the GUI in the Qt Designer. And I'll demonstrate this real quick, just because it's been pretty neat. Um, it's similar to a Visual Basic Designer or something like that. You can drag things around and design layouts this way and add code in the future. So I'll just leave that there. Um, I will unplug this so we can see some noise coming in and I'll open the decoder. So this is what noise looks like. Uh, this window here represents a very small snapshot of the raw PCM audio data coming into the sound card. The top left represents the length of pulses, so it's more of the histogram. How many pulses of what length are found, and these horizontal units are in samples, and this is recording at 44,000 samples a second. It gets kind of complicated. This is the actual data that it's decoding and if it detects garbage data, it dumps out a negative 1 or a negative 2 based upon how much garbage it thinks it is. Uh, from our microchip, we should be sending numbers from 0 to 100 a bunch of times. So clearly it's not receiving anything. Uh, as soon as I hook up the battery here, now we're transmitting. And you can see indeed that's the case. These are the ramp from 0 to 200. Uh, it's pretty robust. It's not skipping any numbers. These are the numbers that are coming in, and again, i got to emphasize, this is going really fast. Um, just to get our averages reset, I'm going to open the program, close and open the program again. And yeah, look at this, points per second, that's over 700, and that's data points. That's not the number of bits. The number of bits is, gosh, what is that, 12,000? So that means that it's counting the length of 12,000 pulses a second. Uh, these are the three main pulse lengths, and this is a histogram, so it's a count of these three. The reason I included this here is because if you're writing for an architecture you're not very familiar with, like maybe I'm using a microchip with a different clock source or a crystal of a different speed or something like that, if the microchip is running at a different speed, the length of each pulse is going to be different. And if I don't know the length of these pulses, which separates a small pulse from a long pulse, I can just look at this histogram and say, okay, well, anything between 5 and 9 represents a 0, and anything between 9 and... 12 represents a 1, and I can just put those three numbers in the software. So this represents a very dynamic way to receive audio and turn it into data. Uh, very flexible, with minimum of code necessary on the AVR. And uh, just 
for demonstration purposes. I'll take this across the room and I'll leave it here and you can see we're a pretty good distance from the computer. We'll see what happens. And you saw there might have been a couple glitches there but I mean, that's working pretty well from way over here. There's the transmitter. Um, you know what, I'm going to keep that another stress test here. So I haven't actually tried it this hard. I'm going to take it into another room completely. Um, let's see, there we go. So here's another room. Come back in here. Okay, this is a good example. So this is really pushing the capability of this chip beyond where it should be. You can see we're getting a lot of noise in there, but still uh, probably one in three data points is accurate. And even here, clearly that's pretty good. So the only thing that makes these data points thrown out is that maybe a bit in the mirror image is off or something like that. If you added a little bit more robust decoding and perhaps sent the same data seven or eight times, you could probably get a very, very accurate reception. Uh, and again, this is a very non-reliable way to send wireless information, but it does represent a, a pretty good way to send wireless information at low cost. That's the key. All of this is done with about three dollars worth of equipment. Uh, we'll bring this back here so it doesn't look so bad. Uh, a, one other thing to notice is that it might be worth in the future reworking this protocol a little bit so it can receive small bursts of data and the advantage of that would be that we could have multiple transmitters going at the same time and if each transmitter transmits something like a barcode then it would be pretty easy to figure out which transmitter is sending what um, and clearly it's sending data fast enough that we could have several transmitters sending small packets of data a few times a second and it wouldn't overlap uh, I'm going to package all of the code to make this run in a little zip file and attach it to this post this will be fully documented on the website, swharden.com. If you end up using this idea or something similar in one of your projects, send it to me. I'd love to see it, and I'll post a link to your project on my website.